want you to turn with me to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Hopefully you brought your Bibles with you. If, if you have your phone, you can look it up there. Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to be reading out of verse number 3. And it says this, Isaiah says, he says, listen, it's the voice of someone shouting. He says, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time that you have given us today, for this day that you have made. We pray right now that you would have your way tonight, Lord. Help me to decrease so that you would increase, Father, that you would season my words, Lord God, tonight, your words, Lord God, through my mouth, Father, that, that Lord God, hearts, would be, uh, hearts would, be, would be touched tonight, Lord, that lives would be transformed through your word. Lord, we know that your word brings life. And Lord, if there are any here in need of some life tonight, Lord, I pray that you would, Lord God, breathe your word into their lives, Lord God, and I pray right now for a restrengthening, a renewing, a refreshing in our lives tonight, Lord, as you would have your way, as we would allow you to have your way within our lives. Lord God, help us not only to be hearers, but doers of your word, and we know that in doing that, in obedience, we will see your blessing, we will see your provision like Nothing else, Father, in our lives. We thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen. And also, I wanted to welcome those who are viewing with us online. So all of you who are streaming with us, we want to welcome you to our to our Wednesday midweek service uh, uh, in the parking lot. We're having a great time here. Um, and so we want to thank you for, for tuning in um, and uh, uh, being with us tonight. And so we're on a series entitled Unqualified. Unqualified. I don't know about you, but there was a time in my life that, 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 I, was, that I was in this valley of, of, of feeling uh, unqualified. And not saying that, that I've reached any point of perfection now in my life. But what I, what I mean by this is this, is this, this place that I found myself in uh, caused me to not move any further uh, in, in answering the calling of God on my life. You see, this is what this does, uh, is, is if a person feels unqualified, uh, it causes them, it causes them not to go any further. I remember taking my son to his first Pinewood Derby. We spent, we spent uh, a, a long time uh, building our car and, and making, you know, I, I looked it up on YouTube to see how you can make a Pinewood Derby car really fast. Um, and my wife can attest to this. Um, and we built this car and, and I thought, you know, for sure, uh, you know, we were going to get uh, at least second place. So we get, to the, we get to the race day and we're excited. My son's nervous. And when I tell you that we lost the first two races, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good feeling. We didn't even qualify uh, to go any further. And let me tell you, when you're in that, when you're in that situation, uh, it's not a good feeling. Uh, it, doesn't, it, it isn't a place that you like to be at. Uh, and so, you know, I was looking at his face and I can see, you know, the, the, the face of, 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 of uh, you, know, you know, quite, you know, a little bit of disappointment. Um, and, 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 you know, he wasn't too excited about, about not being able to move any further. But let me tell you right now, if you're at that place in your life where you feel that you may be, feel disqualified uh, to do God's work, I want to set some things straight tonight. Because let me tell you right now, and I'm sure you've heard this before, that whoever God calls, he equips. This is what God does in our lives, and this is what he seeks to do uh, in yours tonight. How many, how many of you are ready for change to take place tonight in your life? Put your, put your headlights on, you know, just real quick. If you're, if you're ready for change tonight in your life, you came, you came expecting tonight for God to do great things in your life then you're in the right place. You see, Isaiah wrote this 
700 years before this man named John the Baptist was born. And this is who we're going to be talking about tonight is this man uh, uh, by the name of John, John the Baptist. We all know him very well. Uh, and and uh, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied about this man that was to come to announce uh, the coming of Jesus Christ into this earth. 700 years before Isaiah prophesied this about John. When you think of someone who is, who is radical, uh, you think of John the Baptist. You know, you, you maybe think of, of, of how this man dressed. You know, he wore, he wore some odd clothes, some things that maybe uh, wasn't the norm uh, even in those times. And the Bible says that John even, John even ate weird things. Uh, his, his choice of food was, was locusts and honey. It doesn't even sound appealing. Not even if you're starving, it doesn't sound appealing. And this is what John decided to feast on uh, and, to, and to maintain on. A rugged man indeed. This man was not concerned with how people viewed him, nor how they spoke about him. But he was, his concern was preparing the way for Jesus Christ. You see, it was John's job to, so to speak, roll out the red carpet for Jesus. It was, his, it was his task to prepare those in his time for the Savior. John knew that he was just a small piece in God's great plan. John says in Mark 1 verse 7, he says, I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of Jesus' sandals. You see, John understood, uh, John understood that it wasn't his talent that qualified him. Uh, it wasn't how he looked. It wasn't how he spoke that qualified him to do God's work. It was the simple fact that God called him. I want to look at two things. This sermon is entitled, My Dream is Too Radical. How many of you ever had dreams before and God put something on your heart and God, God told you that, that such and such was going to happen in your life and, and certain, certain mountains were going to be moved on your behalf and you told someone that and they, they looked at you like you were crazy. They said, what are you talking about? That's not possible. My dream is too radical. I want to look at two things here tonight that encompassed John the Baptist's life in doing God's work. Number one was that John was determined. He was determined. And we know this very well in this day and age uh, to be determined. Uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're like any one of us here, uh, you're having a hard time maybe looking for essential things for your home, right? You want to, you want to make sure that you have uh, enough supplies in your house, but with everything that's taking place, uh, it's a little difficult to do so. And I'm talking about just the essential things that we need to, to uh, you know, bring some comfort into your life or maybe, maybe just to survive. There, it's a little tough to get. But how many know that in finding those things, we can be very determined. We're very determined. We're not gonna settle for we're sold out, right? We're gonna go to 10 different stores looking for what we need, right? Why everyone needs toilet paper in this time, we all don't know. But guess what? We need it too, right? We need to find this. You know, even though it might be a silly thing, we still need this, right? We need it as comfort. We don't need it to survive, but we need it as comfort. But we will be determined on finding some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, 
however many places I have to go to, however many miles I have to drive, however long I have to stay on my phone, you know, looking at, looking at whatever place you're, you're, you're looking at to buy it from, uh, for it to pop up, uh, you're determined to get it. So we know what this looks like. We know how it is to be in a place of determination. He knew, John knew that his purpose, his specific role, and he put all his energies into this task. He knew what he was called to do. And so because he knew what he was called to do, he was able to put everything that he had, everything that, 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 that he was given into completing this task up ahead. In Luke 1 verse 80, it says, John grew up and became strong in spirit. And he lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. You see, what John did was he set himself apart, right? He was so determined on completing this task that what he did was he went away into the wilderness to live because he wanted to set himself apart so that he can focus solely on his relationship with God the Father. He wanted to make sure that he didn't have anything else infiltrating his mind because he had a job to do and he didn't want to hear the naysayers. He didn't want to hear all the negative things going on. He didn't want to, he didn't want to see all the hypocrites. He didn't want to see all those who, 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 who called themselves Christians but lived a total different lifestyle. So he was determined to have the mind of God Luke tells us that John was in the wilderness when God's word of direction came to him. See, John's journey of miracles started even before his birth. You see, what, what took place in John's life was his parents, uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth, were unable to conceive. They were unable to have a child. And so now they found themselves in a, in a, in a much older age now to where, to where uh, uh, obviously uh, they felt that time has, ha had, had gone. It was diminished. And their hope of having a child was gone as well. The Bible says that, a, that an angel of the Lord came to, came to Zechariah and said, you are going to have a child. Your wife is going to have a child. Your wife is going to bear a child, Zechariah. You are to name him John. And the angel went in to describe all the things that John was going to be doing. But this was hard for him to believe. They felt hopeless in this situation. But you see, John's pathway into this earth was paved with radical faith because it took Zechariah believing that this can happen for it to happen. So you can see that before John was even conceived, his pathway was paved with this, with this faith. It was, it was set for him. What does that mean for us? Don't give up hope for those things that you are seeking God for. I'm sure that Zechariah and Elizabeth seeing God perform the miracle of childbirth at their, at their old age, uh, it probably made it easier for them to believe how God was gonna use their child. So you have no idea how God is gonna flip your situation around. He's not only gonna work a miracle in your life, but he's also gonna use that miracle for you to believe in even greater things to come. See, God is seeking to use you radical faith believers tonight. Those of you that have experienced God's, God's wonder working power in your life. You've seen God move mountains. You've seen God heal. You've seen God do crazy things within your life. See, now it's your job. It's your task to encourage those who have those radical dreams of their own. See, Luke records of a time when John leaped in his mother's womb at the very presence of Jesus in the womb of his own mother. 
So you can see that urgency uh, and that passion had already given birth before he even came out of the womb. God created us with the same opportunities to do great things. We've all been given the right to choose. Doesn't matter what neighborhood you grew up in. Doesn't matter who your parents were. Doesn't matter if you had no parents. It doesn't matter how you speak or how you look. You see, God can use anyone. God can use anyone to show someone the love and forgiveness of him. You all can, we all can be used to show God's love. Some of you may think, well, I don't have a radical dream. That doesn't matter because God may call on you tomorrow with a radical dream. See, the key point is, are you going to listen? Are you going to be obedient to the calling on your life? So, God, so John was determined. Secondly here, uh, he was uncompromising. I like this. John was uncompromising. Uh, in Luke chapter one and verse six, it reads like this, and it says, Zachariah and Elizabeth, which are John the Baptist's parents, were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. It says, one day Zachariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. Verse 11 says, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I like that. Whenever, whenever we have fear in our life, God brings comfort. That's what he does. We, we fear, God brings comfort. He says, do not be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord, their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. You see, the, the angel of the Lord basically came to Zechariah and, and told him that his son would be uncompromising, just as, just as Zechariah was. That's a blessing from God. You see, when we are, when we are steadfast uh, in, in, uh, in our godly character and, and in, and in uh, what, what God is directing us in, when we are obedient to him, our children get blessed. Your children, you will see the fruit of your commitment to Christ in their lives. As you seek to honor God in your ways, uh, I believe our children will follow suit, amen? Amen. And in today's society, you almost, you almost, can't, you almost can't tell the difference uh, uh, today between the church and the world when it comes to uncompromising or when it comes to compromising. You know, we have these, we have these social drinking Christians. I mean, really? How are, you, how are you separating yourself from the world? See, it's a dangerous place when, when the church uses God's word to justify their actions instead of for sanctification. It's a dangerous place when the, when the church says, oh, you know what, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say you can't do that. Instead of letting the Bible transform their lives and draw them closer to God. That's a scary place to be, church. I believe this world is looking for something different. Today, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take today, you and I, to become a people who is zealous after God. It's gonna take a church who is a praying church. We need to get back to prayer. We need to get back to prayer. We need to get back to our, to our communication with God. 
We have, we have many, many second, uh, second generation Christians here tonight. Maybe third generation uh, uh, Christians uh, tonight. Maybe you're listening tonight. And why do I bring that up? Why? Because I'm a second generation Christian. I'm here because of, because of the prayers of my mother where she, where she uh, uh, constantly prayed for, 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 for my brother and I and our, and our household. She was, the, she was the one fighting for us in prayer. And so God honors that. And so now you can see the blessings of that. You see, but what happens when a generation stops praying is that the generation to come will cease to exist in the kingdom of God. It's a dangerous place to be. So we need to get back to prayer. We need to get back to seeking God with everything that we have so that our, so that our generations to come will be blessed and we will see them love and serve God with all of their hearts. Matthew 3, 8 says, prove by the way you live. This is John. He says, prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sin and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe for we are descendants of Abraham. There you go. They were, they were saying we're safe because, because we are under the covering of Abraham. He says, that means nothing. He says, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. See, people were showing up to be baptized, but their lives weren't backing it up. It's a sad thing when the conduct of a Christian becomes a hindrance for others to believe instead of a help. Ask God to help us in the area of consistency of godly character in our lives. Charles Spurgeon once said this, he says, by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. And it's very true. It didn't happen, it didn't, it didn't happen all of a sudden. It was consistency. It was consistency. And when we're living for Christ, it's going to take consistency. And when we want to see breakthrough in our lives, when you want to see breakthrough in your marriage, when you want to see breakthrough in your children, when you want to see breakthrough at work, when you want to see breakthrough in your health, it's going to take consistency. If you find yourself no longer thirsting and hungry for God's word, ask him to restore the joy of your salvation. See, doing what God desires is the greatest possible life investment. Uh, Matthew 11, 11 says, uh, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than, none is greater than John the Baptist. Wow. It says, yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Can you imagine if John heard those words, he would fall to his knees in humility. Why? Because, because to hear the Lord speak that about him, John knew that it wasn't his power, but it was the power of Jesus Christ. See, what he did was he pointed people to Jesus. It's a lot different than we see in this day and age where, where, a, lot of, where a lot of believers uh, point people to themselves by the things that they do, by the things that they put on their bodies or the things they don't put on their bodies. Forgetting the great commission that all men would be drawn to Jesus. See, you see, just as it was John's task to prepare the way for the Lord's coming, it's our task today to prepare the world for the Lord's second coming. It's our job. And how are we gonna do that? With God's help. Why? Because we're not perfect. We always make mistakes. But guess what? Guess what? God didn't choose perfect people. If you don't know about his word, read about the 12 disciples. They were, they were a mess. They were a mess. God wants to use our lives in a great and mighty way, but it's going to take determination and consistency within our lives uh, in, 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 in not compromising spiritual truths, not, not, lowering your, not lowering that bar, those standards in your life because the world is going that way. 
See, we don't live by, we don't live according to the world. We live according to the word. We need to be that light in this world, this very dark, fearful, chaotic world. We need to be the light. And it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be in, in, in chewing people out, but it's going to be in our conduct of Christ-like character. It's gonna be through love. They're gonna be drawn through the love of God and the consistency in your life that you practice what you preach. You see, the world isn't, the world isn't drawn to, to, to us conforming to the world. The world is drawn to people who they can say they know they care about them. If you care about someone, you're gonna speak the truth into their life. Why? Because you wanna spare them from eternal, eternal damnation. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna speak the truth. Every day, we're gonna speak the truth. Why? Because we love you. Because God loves you. And because this is what has got us here today. And this is the commission that God has put on our hearts today to speak the truth because the truth will set you free. Amen. Is every head is about every eye closed tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is the time. Now is the time. The Bible says tomorrow is not promised. And if, if that's you tonight and you want to make a personal commitment to follow Christ and to submit to his ways. It's his way, not our way. Let me tell you, when you do that, you will see the blessings in your life. You will see yourself start being successful. You will see victories in your life. This isn't a, this isn't a uh, prosperity message where you're gonna see God just you know, bless you with all these finances. God's gonna give you even greater. God's gonna give you joy. God's gonna give you peace. God's gonna give you hope. God's gonna give you an inheritance that cannot be taken away. If that's you tonight and you wanna receive God and you wanna, you wanna receive Christ into your life and you wanna make a commitment to follow him, I want you to repeat this prayer after me and say, Jesus, I come to you a sinner asking for forgiveness. Lord, I believe that you died for me and that you conquered death so that I could have life and a life more abundant. Lord, I thank you for the joy, the peace, the strength, the direction, the wisdom, the discernment, the protection upon my life. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit that now dwells inside of me. Help me to be obedient. Help me to surrender unto you. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I wanna say a prayer for all those here tonight. You're watching online. If you could bow your heads with us tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray right now Lord God, over your children, that we would know our rightful place, that we would know the power that you have given to us, and that we would use this power for its proper purpose. Lord, all those things that you've done in our lives, that we would share with someone else, that it wouldn't be a spectacle of how good we are, but a testimony of how awesome you are. Lord, that we would receive none of the glory, but all the glory goes to you. All the glory goes to you, Lord. Lord, help us right now. If we are living life focused on self, if we are living life focused on, on, on prideful thinking, Lord, remove that from our lives right now. Remove it so that we can walk freely with you.
Lord, and help us to surrender. All that you ask is that we surrender, that we surrender, that we surrender, and that we take your hand and that, and that we, we allow you to lead us on this path. Yes, it is a narrow path, but you are with us and that's all that matters. Help us not to look to our left or to our right. If there are any following behind, but help us keep our eyes on you. And as we seek you, and as we honor you, and as we love you, and as we are obedient to you, you are going to have people following what we are doing. As we lead them to you, Father. Lord, help us, Lord God, to be the head and not the tail. Lord, help us to always know that greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in this world. The victory has been won. The enemy is defeated. Lord, help us to not listen to those lies and fill our mind with the truth. Lord, we pray right now. Lord, you are doing great things tonight, Lord. You are doing great things tonight. You are doing great things tonight, Father. There's lives being changed tonight. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. There's eyes that have been opened tonight. There's, heart, there's hearts that have been softened tonight. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing and that your word would continue to bring sanctification within our lives that we would not use your word to justify the things that we do, but that we would see how close we can get to you. Not to see how close we can get to the world, but how close we can get to Christ's likeness. Father, we pray this right now. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Give God some praise tonight. Give God some praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus.